This is great. We're going to go right into it here, gang. No. Speaking of FDL versus Wings. <laughs> Thank God we're going to have to talk about how this game is going to be not close. Yeah. Not close. Now, but I, I want to... MSS said that he, he said he thought Wings looks a little... I think it looks shaky is the word he used right sure. now. And uh, I, I wouldn't have said that coming into this. So I'm actually intrigued by, by that analysis uh, from an NA player. I mean, they've, they've lost some games, you know? Like, they've lost some games against teams that are arguably, like... Definitely tier two Chinese. They like they they may maybe didn't even make it to regional qualifiers, kind of a thing. So yeah. I, I think they're trying new stuff out. Um, I think right. they're they're testing the meta. Most of the heroes that they've used and, and used well at TI are gone. Maybe not abused isn't the right word, but because they had such a wide hero pool. But they could be different. And FTL man, they they've got to beat them here. And I, yeah. there's a possibility. You never know. I feel like that's BS, Perch. I mean, these guys won TI. Every single eye in Dota is on them. So what do you do when you're Ten facing a tier two Chinese team? team? No, you, nothing. You just screw around. You wait till the beat international when you start bringing out the big Radiant tier team. LAN strats. It's, it's you wait the till friendship, infinite. dedication, and love to pull out your real strategy. Yes. Is that what you're saying? FDL is trying to stop them, and it's time for Wings to get back in that TI flavor. The oh, eyes are going to be on them no matter what now. So it's time you know to what? bring out the guns. Wings and there they are. They're Sandstorm first. <laughs> Sand King. I, I think oh. what's actually most likely is Wings moderately tries drafting. Like, I don't think they'll pull out any of their new stuff mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. game. I think they'll go for something that they think they can consistently win. And then if they're down next game, then they're going to try real hard. That's you don't want to be in the loser bracket this tournament. No. Sure that. Dude, best of one lower bracket. One of the scariest things in Dota. Indeed. Dota is not a best of one game. But uh, one of the things we need to mention here, FDL, there's been a little change of pace. Oh, no. Suzy, a.k.a. 747, he's got the crown. Uh, he's he's drafting right now. It's been Stan King historically, and that, that's a big change for this team. Very recent one as well. Yeah, um, FDL have not really had too much of uh, drafting like what's the word domination Wings variance games, diversity oh, yeah hero yeah, diversity it, 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 like they, you just see kind of the same drafts from them routinely and i don't really feel like they have expanded that strategy too much like if, say i watch np right mm -hmm. i watch np pick spen invoker every single time in the american qualifier Ten they could and over and over and over again but yep. we know they have like Five, six five different like remain. various strategies that they have in their back pocket. I don't feel like the same sort of thing for FDL. Um, I feel like it's the same general heroes that they're going to be picking up. Wings are the exact opposite. They yeah. do anything. Wings yeah. can draft everything. They can make anything work. Yeah. They picked up techies. Yeah. On the main stage. I at, saw at them. TI. You know, it's like. Yeah. We're sitting right next to him. One of their drafter guy just took out a D20 and rolled. I mean, I it was terrifying. Homie doesn't know what he's got going on. It's pretty sick. He's been Smart. watching too much Dunkers so, and Dragons. So what you're saying in order to win TI, they just got critical hit after yeah. critical hit? Is that oh, what happened? Oh, shit, 20 pick life stealer guys. We did it. Modbax, what are you thinking about these? Uh, anything interesting you can tell us about FDL? Well, just kind of going off of that whole draft diversity, too. One of the people that actually plays the most heroes for them is Visa. Mm -hmm. But in the first phase, we already got this life stealer picked up. So um, up against the Batrider, kind of surprising maybe that we don't see that, of course, well-loved Stan King Oracle. Maybe it won't get banned out here and they'll still have a chance to go for it. Um, they might feel that it'll, it'll still be good enough based on whatever heroes they're pairing it up with. And well, it'll be a silencer ban instead. But yeah. um, like Visa and Shadow, I find, actually share quite a few characteristics in terms of like, the heroes they play and the way they build and stuff like that, too. Like We see a lot of that Lincoln's Void coming out from Visa 2. Yep. Um, and uh, like right now, I'm seeing a lot of like Lincoln's Weaver as well from Wings. So. I, th I think they grab the Life Stealer, though, just because they, it gives you a Batrider advantage in yeah, exactly. laning. Uh, something that um, SVG Five mentioned to me. Remaining. Um, you have to just rage off the Napalms if he ever really does go for fire, Firefly and Escape. Attack. If you can get within range of open wounds, it guarantees your supports can also do enough damage rather than the typical Batrider flies of a cliff mm -hmm. or something into trees to juke. So. Yeah. And one of the strategies against FDL you always have to look out for, Slacks, good old-fashioned oh. position one, Vengeful Spirit. We saw it in game three, yeah, NP played it, FDL, they pick. play it more than anyone else in this tournament. I think in the last 30 days they've run it nine times, something like that. It, it's a lot, and it's Ooh. almost always position one if they pick Venge, so something You to see, this is there. why FDL is going to win this, why they're the only team that can beat Wings. Crazy. It's because Wings hasn't researched them. Everybody else Radiant here, their but, games are out there. These guys don't know those classic picks that everyone else has already learned to ban against I mean, you do FDL. know that they can use the Dota client to see what FDL has they been could, doing in the past, right? But who Maybe would? they don't have a Chinese version of that Dota. It's the Firewall. Or Dota buff. Okay. Or whatever That's right. you choose. Everyone's That's working right now. Indeed. So, they're weakest against FDL, whose replays are probably the hardest to find. Think about it, Bird. 
Wings Gaming. Which, actually, so isn't it the opposite? Deal with that, isn't is it Wings the team that's like hard to, to read well, right now because the they were on the boat? Yeah. <laughs> Lost to time. <laughs> out in space somewhere, those bots. <laughs> Down in Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> yeah. Well, they take the Murano away from Wings at least, so they won't be able to get the, the AoE damage with Fatal Bonds. Oh, yeah. I it's mean, that actually advantage. had a huge impact in that other game. Yeah, so they picked Venno right here. And they're also going to lane him against Razor very likely. That way, if he does a static link, you just leap away. Okay. Reserve time. That's my yeah. expectation. Mm. Wings playing Venno. I don't know if I've seen that, but he's he's hot stuff right now. I... Oh, that was just a classic. Said, oh, <laughs> day. So, I don't know. Was it Slacks? <laughs> no, oh, yeah, was, dude. Oh, then it was no. a smart idea if yeah. it wasn't Slacks. Yeah, yeah, that was me. Yeah. No what? problem. Wings uh, plays Venno all the time. They have one of the best Venno players on their stack, bro. Sacks, they 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 yeah. were picking. I mean, they were picking Venno a lot at like ESL Manila. You're like, a few months like behind. Seven months. Are you kidding me? Venno's hot right now. Talk to Arteezy if you don't think Venno's hot right now, bro. Is Venno hot right now for Wings though? Uh, we're about to find out because they practice that shit on the cruise ship. I, really... I was there. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're the missing link we needed. <laughs> I was the one man who came back, the Amelia Earhart of Dota. <laughs> <laughs> Went over there, got lost. Here I am. I do, like, I do like the Weaver ban from FDL, though. That's something Trent and I were talking about yesterday, that Wings has been playing a lot of Weaver recently. It's really good against Lifestealer, mainly. Yeah, that yeah. too. The, oh, you open wounds, I'll just max movement speed. <laughs> so does no matter. Mm -hmm. The Have problem is there's so there? many heroes that are good versus Lifestealer. Yeah. If you pick it yeah. one, two, and then you don't pick up your, uh, like, a scaling mid... So they banned away Weaver and Juggernaut, both good versus Lifestealer, but there's still Razor, there's still Sven, there's still all these heroes out there that Wings could pick up that are good versus the Lifestealer, so it means your one position is is very ineffective versus a draft, just straight up. So you, then you are forced into a situation where it's like, okay, we got to snowball, we got to get these pickoffs, we got to have, have a big net worth advantage to be able to beat them because inherently the heroes matched up against Lifestealer beat. There's still Ursa out in the pool, there's all those heroes, right, that are still there. Yeah. That, that's why I'm not a big fan of the, the Marana pickup because I don't feel Marana skills well enough. Like, and you are so incentivized just to, like, try and win at 15 minutes. Yep. And continue to win at 20 and 25 and close out the game by 35. It all comes back to Batrider, too. I mean, as Purge said, like, you are looking for those heroes that are good against the Napalm stacks in the lane. If you're not going to have someone like this Oracle there with the uh, Fortune's End, you look for your Life Sealers, your Slyrex, your Juggernauts or something. But picking up this early and reducing that potential out of Bisa, who, again, is someone who has kind of carried a lot of their games. Like, mm -hmm. him and Suzy have looked spectacular. Uh, you know, everyone else is enabling them. But when you have a hero that is open so early Sky to all these different me. counters... It's I'm Whoa. pretty worried. Oh, Skyrath. Oh. Very good at zoning Batrider. Um, I would say it's very yeah. terrible against Razor, though. Um, not a good support in that sense, because every time you cast a spell on him, he's going to slow you back. Yeah. yeah. But um, it does give them good trialing potential, and I think that's maybe one place that they need to. Ten seconds. That they're going to try to do at least. Kunkka Warlock is kind of scary, but their setup's bad, so. Yeah. Depending on what carry Wings gets, Maybe. it could give FDL trialing advantage, which I think is something they've been trying to work for this whole time. Yeah. With the Murana counter to the Reserve Razor time. and. Lifestealer being okay against Batrider, they want to be able to win that trialing. Yeah. Dangerous part is though that Razor can easily work in a trialing as well. That's so true. they could actually pick up a different mid uh, for Wings to match up against the Marana and then match the Razor against the Lifestealer trialing if they wanted to. That's the kind of curveball that Wings would throw. Mm -hmm. Not many teams will do that. I feel like Skywrath I've seen mostly pick to counter Timbersaw. That's what I always think of with a, a Skywrath pick. He just shuts down the Timbersaw. Magic damage, silence, all that good stuff. But Oh yeah, that not, makes sense. Not going to be the case here. Hmm. You know who's a great mid in this game? Who? Venomancer. A lot of burst damage, a lot of poison. That's an interesting suggestion, Slacks. I don't think I've heard that one before. Okay. For which team? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> that is the question. That's the $100,000 Canadian yeah. question right there. I, I, know. I also, believe Wings would have an opening in mid, potentially. I'm not sure if FDL really do. They can roam around the, with the Marana and pick up a different mid, I guess. Uh, Pretty bad setups, though. Yeah. Overall. Not, not great setups, but maybe he just plays that roaming where he just kills neutral. Yeah, they ban out the Dusa. Interesting. Team well, they're very, like, hard set on initiation, right? And Medusa is the hard counter to uh, initiation focused drafts that are very, like, mm -hmm. tempo based that try and go, go, go. Because. You pop that ultimate and it's like, fight's over. You have to back out, reinitiate. Lifestealer's terrible at reinitiating. Uh, yeah. Sand King's, you know, he's full committal. Um, Braun is a little Five bit, you know, commitment. Skyrath Mage, full committal. So you would have, you'd be very hard pressed to be able to back out and re-engage. And... So that's why I thought Warlock's strength was, isn't he kind of the, 
the go-to counter initiator now. Everybody pops on me, get the golems, and then... I mean, the golems are nice, but it's more of a interrupt. It's it's so long range that it kind of interrupts the tempo that your opponents are planning to do okay. with an initiation and allows you to do stun setups afterwards. Yeah. Stuff like that. There's also kind of varying degrees of, of resets. Right? Like Naga Siren, that's a hard reset. It stops the fight. Medusa is somewhere in the middle there where she stops the fight, but it's, you know, you can Ooh. still continue what the push hell? nature's profit. MJW Hero. Okay. One of his classics. Tell us about it, buddy. Why is he good? I don't know. He's just, he's a madman. Goes in that off lane, rocks the profit, so. I mean, this is going to be one where they know exactly what they're doing, or they have well, no idea. Is Yuri on beat <laughs> that rider by spamming Triance at him? Uh, in lane, I Early. feel like pre-level pre 3, yes, yeah. because then your your Firefly is still pretty weak. But, yeah. Um, I, I mostly see this as FDL wants to, like, crap on the lanes, and that's the only way they win this, because Bat, in some ways, is also the counter to MP. As is Kunkka, in some ways, there's there's they can easily cancel the split push, at least, so um, it'll probably be MP taking a 1v1, and he'll just oh, What? What? Like it. The Wolfman like coming. What in the world is Boys this? and girls, this is one hell of a Game 1 draft here for this series. Um, Welcome to Wings Gaming. <laughs> Lightning was a classic counter to Lifestealer because he ignores the um, he ignores the slow. He's got a lot of physical damage um, to be able to rip apart the Lifestealer. Um, can't really be kited at all. Uh, I, I like this pickup. It's just... Lycan's been out of the meta, and that's the only reason you don't like it. All right, gang. Because it doesn't feel strong. We need quick predictions, and we got to give it over to our casters. Oops. Yeah, as you can see, it's time for the casters. <laughs> we got to go. Who's taking game one? Quickly. Lycan, Team Wings, let's go. All right, I got to go Wings. I'm going to go Wings, too, because I, th I think Skyrath is going to be pretty useless. Like yeah. game two. I'm going to go Wings, because they're Wings. They could have drafted all five Intelligence heroes, and I probably would have said Wings. And you're going FDL, right? No, no, come with us yeah. on Wings. Yeah, Pisa, let's go. Yeah. All right, FDL. Well, right. there sorry, you have it. Packs. There yeah, you have that's it. what happens here at the end of the couch. Rip Mod Packs. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got casters for this series. It's going to be Mod again, but this time joined by the wondrous Grand Grant. Grant. Oh. You're with me here for game number one between FDL as well as Wings. It's quite the David versus Goliath story. Grant, we have some interesting picks. What do you think, buddy? I don't know. The MJW on the Furion. We're going to have Lycan on the side of Wings. It could be interesting. It seems like a throwback to old FDL when they were winning games looking like a... A, a tier two and a tender, yeah. And I, I think this is a good pick. Go back to what worked for him. Yeah, they have MGW on that nature's profit. Obviously, the, the most interesting thing is going to be the the lichen, which we I don't think we've seen in the competitive scene at least not recently. I don't think there's been any picked heroes of lichen. I I can't think of any off the top of my head. And so. it is going to be middle. Yeah, it's a middle lichen, which is very interesting. Uh, it gets his fast levels. Obviously, hope we can get a a couple of fast items going his way, but. This is going to be interesting. What do you do against this Lycan? Can you rotate on him? Can you try to find different, you know, have the, the Furion TP in and look for a Sprout or something to bring down this Lycan? I think something like that. You rotate in a Furion, then you have the Sky out there just throwing Qs before he suicides to neutrals early game. You just got to shut him down. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to be easy for FD. Obviously, we talked about it. They're they're clearly the underdogs in this series. They are uh, a team. They're they're on the cusp of the Tier 2, Tier 1 barrier in North America. They're one of those teams that obviously they beat MP to get here. MP looked very good in that last series. So you, you'd imagine FDL a pretty solid team, but this is not an easy match. This is the TI winners, obviously. Wings is doing very well. Burrow strike on it, too. Nice to jump from 04. Still, there's going to be the static link coming out. 7 4 7 able to get away, but maybe not. He's going to have to use his leap. He skills it up early on. The uphill miss comes out. That was going to be a lot of damage from Shadow. Luckily enough, they do miss it. So, yep. And he did get the rune. 747 somehow juked around the torrent and picked up the rune. So he had the skill leap, though, meaning he won't be able to just arrow the range creep, which is huge, because the Lycan with a Quelling Blade is going to outlast hit Yeah. It's going to be tough. One. Yeah, it's going to be rough for him early. Yeah, Susie will have a tough time more than likely in this mid lane. But it is an aggro trial lane from Wings. What do you feel about this this off lane coming out for uh, this Wings squad? It's going to be pretty easy for Shadow to just link and do stuff like he's doing right there, and then they just throw out a torrent. But when Link's down and his damage is lower, that's when they're going to have to go, and they're going to have to get good pulls from uh, the 0-4 Sand King. Yeah, it's not going to be easy with Wings contesting the pull camp with them being aggressive. You can already see Ice Ice walking up on the Kunkka just trying to be a nuisance here. This will leave that one one matchup that we thought about, the Batrider versus the Anitra Prophet in that top lane, which is what Purge and Cap were talking about pre-level 3, the Anitra Prophet yep. having a good time for the most part. And you just make two sets of trees and you just send them on the Batrider and hope to harass a little, or you just do what MJW is doing, he's just trying to farm. Yep, and there's the Treant hitting him. Yeah. You just have to avoid 4 to 5 stacks. He can always TP out of it now, especially because uh, 
the W does not yeah, cancel no my break cancel, yeah. which is good. He's just going to do that now. He, he has to go all the way back home, because look at, that was only a couple of ticks of Firefly, but that's still enough to push MGW back home. He had those four stacks like you were talking about, and already the, the Batrider taking control of this lane. In fact, Wings are winning just about every lane. I mean, there's only one CS advantage going the way of the Lycan mid, but you still have four lasses going for Shadow. It's still very close down in the bottom line, but it does look like they're starting to accrue it a, a small advantage for Wings' side. It does. It seems like FDL does that a lot. They, they don't necessarily sack Biza, but he is almost always the one getting the least amount of farm. You'll see 747 and MJW get more farm than him because he almost always gets tri lane. Yeah, it seems. So it works for them a lot of time. He's supplying the carry. Lincoln, 747 go toe to toe. The new addition, MJW in the top lane taking some rat. But obviously, 747, a very solid mid laner. Uh, I think a lot of people outside of America don't really know who he is. Um, he's played for a couple of different teams. He's stood in for a lot. I mean, he's been around the North American scene for a while now, I believe. Yes, I remember he was at. He's, he has LAN experience. ESL New York last yeah, time. Yep. He played for Archon. Mm -hmm. They're trying to, once again, they, they want to get that LAN win, though. And here again, we go. It's going to be an extra to start things off here. They will catch outstanding the leader, the captain of the team, or at least one of them. Ice Ice will get the first blood, so it's just like that easy torrent comes through, Shadow with his right click, and then that's enough damage for them to secure the kill. Yep, that's going to be rough. Zero four 4 is just a little bit outside of the lane, and they knew that with the ward they had down, and they just rotated onto the Skyrath. That's all it takes. It's not an easy lane coming out for FDL. I mean, they have to be very wary of their positioning. There's an Observer War for the Dire, but it's actually, I think, blocking the camp yeah, currently. Yeah, blocking the camp, and yeah. they cannot counter it yet. But they do see, they keep the 04 like, running back and forth below it, like, oh, we can just go on him when he goes by it. Yeah, 04 is going to have to be very wary. Again, they will have the wave pushed out, so again, more experience with gold. Meanwhile, the Batrider is very low in that top lane. He actually has to go back home as MGW puts a lot of pressure I think Faithion might have been juggling too a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure. I think he might have just been in that top lane also. It looks like it, yeah. Yep. That's interesting, because MJW normally plays a little more playmaking, like, wow, I can stun you, do some damage here, but he's going to be having to teleport around the map, trying to pick up, like, make these 3v3 fights bottom 4v3. I mean, that's what Faithion's really good at. And that's what Wings have to be careful these next couple of moments. They... And you won't probably see a gank on mid. I, I mean, you can send those two heroes, 747 and, and MJW, on to blink. But the problem is that you can't send any to supports. If they leave that lane, that's going to be even harder yep. for PC. He's already getting little to no farm as it stands, so. He might rotate to the jungle soon. Yeah. Meanwhile, Ice Ice rotating around with the smoke with the seat gank. Boots up, wind lace as well, very speedy. Uh, Konko, he'll head towards the top rune spot, perhaps looking for MJW, who's going to back himself away towards that creep camp to farm up. Ice is still deciding where he wants to go. I think he just wanted to secure the four minute room before heading into the top lane. Little slow laning phase, but now we see the uh, Priest of the Moon actually doing extremely good middle. 25 yeah. and 8. I mean, once he gets the star falls up, he can yeah. just star storm. Yeah, star storm. Level 3 star storm is, is when you start really getting your farm. You get harassed and all the creeps. Now we see they're going on the... Razor, this could be a kill. Yes, it is. They have the Burrow Strike as well for 04 to start things off, and they just can't heal him up in time, and a sense was there, but with level 2 Shadow Word and all of that damage coming up from FPL, they do pick up. That's a huge kill on a Razor. Yeah, it is. It's huge. Yeah, and there we go. Like they said, a 4v, what, a 3v3 into a 4v3, that's a good thing about uh, Nature's Prophet. Yeah. You can always make a, a losing fight into a winning fight. I just, I feel like I've never seen this here. Like, we saw him once in Elimination Move, but that's obviously very different. Nature's yeah. Prophet's been out of the meta for like a long yeah, time. Yeah, I think Complexity's picked it once, so maybe and FDL saw something they liked out of that, and they're like, well, MJW right. used to play quite a bit, so. I mean, this is definitely a comfort hero for sure. Yeah, it is. And so far, one to one, they have killed the Razor, and they've only lost the support, so that's good, and we're gonna see rotation from 0-4 and Stanking now. Yeah, they're gonna look to, to find something here. They'll rotate through mid lane to help out 747 for the time being. There's nobody mid currently, as Blink, I believe, is farming up the jungle. Yep. He might come back mid right now as we speak. 04 is looking for the top rune spot, seeing if anybody's there. Blink is just gonna go deeper into the hard camp. Meanwhile, another rotation on the, the dire side, as Shadow's gonna come back mid. They do have, they have the, war. the Warlock nearby, but obviously not level 6. They're gonna rotate in. Shadow is rather speedy, but there's a concussive shot to Burst Quick as well. Arrow's gonna fly to Shadow Word. Is it enough? The Star Storm will bring him down. Great rotations from FDL. They rotate in Faith Beyond. He can't find anything. They also forced another TP out, which is canceled almost instantly from Wings there. And that was strange. They had a ward on the top rune. It just wore off right now. They saw after the smoke pop the the Sand King and that, but that was a great kill. Once again, the uh, Nature's Prophet's putting in work, just TPing in, securing the kill. I mean, this is... It's a small advantage for FDL. It's yeah. still early on in the game, but already you can see Wings not getting off to the best start, even after they got that first blood down bottom. Yep, we see gold and experience advantage going their way, and that's because Visa 
has been left alone. Bottom now. He's he's like, oh, you. I get farmed. That, now. that laning phase almost already over. I'll take it at six minutes. Last hits coming out. Thirty coming up for the life stealer. Thirty-seven for Blink. Thirty-eight for Marana. So. Blink, of course, a lot of these are going to be jungle creeps going his way, but he's still farming rather well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Visa, of course, sitting at phase currently. Stout shield, coiling blade. He's just going to get up to his armlet as quickly as he can. I don't know. This looks pretty good for FDL because MGW also has his phase boots ready yep. to go. Exactly, and I think that's why they rotated the Razor up top now. They're like, oh, wow, Visa can, he can just go on us with a life yeah. and They can make it an unfair fight. Yeah. So it's working out perfectly for him after that uh, little bit. I mean, at least it was just your support dying first blood, still first blood. Yeah. But could have been worse. It definitely could have. Faith Beyond, of course, one of the best off laners in Dota currently. I mean, TI, we saw him perform outstandingly. In the past couple of tournaments in general, he's already up to 1,000 gold. Yep. He's got his Tranquil. His Blink Dagger should be relatively well-timed, I think, for him. Yeah, definitely. I think that's crazy at this land. I think we have, like, three of the best off laners. Yeah. Universe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Faith Beyond, even MSS moving up there now. It's it's an off laner patch again. It used to not be, and it's kind of moved back again. This is without Clockwork, without uh, Dark yeah. really in meta. Both yep. of those heroes are just garbage. Yep. I mean, Universe actually plays Clockwork a bit. Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna make it work, guys. A lot of the time he does, although it's with the help of his team. Yep. Oh. And then he's Universe too. Arrow's gonna come through mid. 747 is going to miss on that one, which is gonna be just getting farmed casually. Um, are you okay with the fact that, you know, wings are getting farmed in the jungle? I mean, they're not really moving around the map. They're not making much happen. Are you okay with how they're playing right now? Uh, I'm surprised. They're pretty much giving free farm to Biza and 747, but obviously they have a plan. I mean, you pick Lycan. You know he's not going to dominate middle. He can fall back in the jungle. Good. And he's going to gank bottom now. And yeah. MJW, this is going to be tough to get out. X Mark Warren's going to come through. This is going to be a kill. They don't rotate anybody up here. They know MJW is going to die. Good attempt at that CT, but it's just a waste of 50 gold as well as the cooldown. Nicely played from wings. And they'll turn this into a tier one tower push top lane. Yep, and that's it. They had a wolf inside those trees. It's almost impossible to TP out of that. They have X, Torrent, just, and they have plenty of vision from the transfer out with the uh, Razor. Yeah, too much damage to deal with. TPs are coming through on Mass. You have O4 coming in with the Burrow Strike ready. They have the Infest Bomb up. They're going to look for one. There's going to be a few brain drop. Link's still very tanky. Shadow, static, with they have to back away. O4 just goes to his death. The Marauders here. Here's the Moonlight Shadow Blast with field. Starstorm, they'll at least take down the Warlock. Shadow, Nature's Breath, Blink Forward, double kill for 747. As soon as he gets it done, it'll back away underneath the guys of that tier one tower. Yep, perfect, like, defensive and aggressive use of the Moonlight Shadow. They didn't see him uh, rotating back in after the arrow, and Warlock was an easy kill, and then, because he went to phase boot instead of brown boot build, he was able to bring the Razor down. That was a good rotation. Almost looked like 0-4 died for nil, but yeah. they rotate in and a huge fear on all. Like, even without being there, he provides something. And there also was a double damage rune for the Marana. She might yeah. not have gotten that kill had not had that not I been there. I don't think she would have. Yeah, she was doing a ton of damage. So, that's good. And we're going to see the drum build for Nature's Prophet. Just give him some movement, be able to just get around the map. Yeah, this is a uh, kind of an action pack game. To be top again. The Burrow Strike 04 will connect on this one. Press the shot. There's the silence as well. X Marks will go though. It's the lead forward from 747. Not quite where he wanted to go. The Sprout. But he does chew his way through with the Quelling Blade. And I think that's the end of the chase. 747 just trying to flank away with the Arcane Rudy as the Star Storm back up and ready to go. But they do defend that Zero Tower top again. Yep, that's good. Uh, I think 747 just forgot about the Quelling Blade because he just arrowed straight in the middle of the trees. Maybe if he knew the Quelling Blade, he could have shot a little more to the right. But going back in. 747 lasts it up. They catch him mid lead. Firefly goes ship. This should be a death rod, and it is. Not expecting the Batrider. That was without a Blink Dagger. He comes right in without it. Yep. And it's more than enough to get the kill. Windlace Tranquil. Plenty of movement speed items now. Yeah. He's up to 1,200 gold. They'll take the two with the light and getting it. That's... That's a lot of gold going the way of wings those past two uh, engagements. The, the Marana going down the Tier 1 Tower top lane. Yes, Beast is getting far mid, but... I don't know if it's really a worthy exchange for FDL here. The thing is, Visa gets farmed, he could just get Batrider lassoed, and then Razor just right-clicks him and Static Link goes through it. It's is going to have a, pro uh, a lot of trouble this game, so... I mean, getting farmed is obviously good on your carry, but... They have to have really solid counter-initiation, and usually that's going to be from the Sand King here. Yep. And with him dying, his his, his Blink Dagger, I, I I would imagine, is not very close to completion. Yep. Marana's going to have to get that. Getting closer to Aghanim, still about... 3,000 off exactly, and I, I think they just need him to go farm that. Well, still a lot uh, at stake in this game. Very early on, very even game for the most part. Uh, the blink like in mid, obviously, a little bit surprising. He's currently top the net worth, which almost to be expected for how much he's farmed the jungle, yep. and of course pushing early on. And they go for the drum spill on the bat rider, by the way. Yep, so they do the same thing. Both off laners do, but on him, yeah, we saw he didn't even need the blink for that last. So they're just going to be probably 5v5, and wings can just run at you. And FPL doesn't have the best like defense. They have a sand king, and then 
Mysterion's not that great in 5v5, Mizra is life deal early. Yeah, it's, it's really about getting that advantage in numbers is what you were talking yeah. about, bringing that nature profit, making the 3 uh, three versus 3 into a 4 versus 3. Wings will go ahead and smoke up early on here. They'll go to beeline it down towards the, I think, Radiant Jungle. They could go to Roche, but I doubt it, and they, in fact, will invade FDL's jungle at this point. It looks like Skyrim is going to be the first to be caught. He has the last of good compressive shot. Playbrick pushes him forward, but they have the X marks and Thorn will connect, and Stanky is done. They even cancel the TP as 0-4 split pushing top. They had a double damage rune on Blank, so fighting into that is very difficult. Is so, that Roche now, maybe? Yeah, I think so. Uh, with the double damage rune, with the amount of damage they have, there is a Treant in there, and the Skyrath Mage is back up in six seconds. I don't know if they can contest this. It might be one of those good old tier one tower top trades for Roche. They have DD, so if they didn't have DD, I don't think they could do Roche, but likely Lycan does. But I think FDL's fine. They know Lycan's going to eventually take Roche down reasonably quick. Yeah. And the smoke gang only kills Dan King again. Like, yeah. They're fine with him taking that gang. They do have to get that tier one though. We'll see if the mayor can do it. So. Yeah, they'll, they'll bring that tier one tower down top lane. They'll get some extra weight pushing to the top lane. I mean, this is the, probably one of the most standard trades in all of the other. Take a tier one tower top lane. Or that tier two top, yeah. It's yeah. like just bad and Roche. Really good. Yep. So Wings know that they're going to be able to get this. Meanwhile, bottom, Fate Beyond did a lot of damage to Scarlet with that Moonlight Shadow. They did dust and they actually caught him. Ice, Ice, can he get this X Marks off? It looks like Stan King is going to walk right back into them. This should be a kill here. Stan King walking into his demise. The torrent will come out with Faith Beyond. Should be more than enough to get the kill. It will be the Batrider picking it up at the last right click. However, top lane, they are pushing rather aggressively. The tier 2 taking a lot of damage. 747 not packing from the plasma field. They have gold, but no mana for for Innocence. That's crazy. They almost they almost got a tier 1 and tier 2. That would have been super worth it. Stan King's like yeah. all according to play. They have our whatever. My life means nothing anymore. <laughs> So they will take the tier 1, or at least they'll attempt to as 0-4 TP's in. Blink's going to go ahead and use his shapeshift. They do have plenty of damage here. The coach is going to come through 0-4, getting caught the X mark back. 0-4 has caught himself in trouble, but they have to invest the last coming out now as well. Can they bring this hero down? Face beyond, taking a lot of damage, but he's not done yet. They're looking to turn this. Here comes Blink back in. They'll find Visa. He's done. And now 747 has to leap away. The shapeshift doing massive work for Blink. Ice Ice taking a lot of damage. That rum again. Just helping them out so much there. That buff just went away literally a half second ago. Yep, and we see Biza trying to arm with toggle. You can't arm with toggle Firefly, though. No, and that that's is, not going to work. That's rough. This, this Nyx is going to just have a rough time all game now. That was just too... It felt like they should have just given up that tower, I think. Maybe done something else before going in a yep. little too hard. Maybe overestimating the amount of damage. And again, the, the ghost ship coming out doing so yeah. much work in terms of the rum. They did see two top and maybe that's why they saw the Warlock as well as plus one defending tier two. And they maybe they felt confident in that fight. And now Wings just has a, a decent gold advantage as well as net worth. We see Flycan just getting built up. He's going to be hard to kill, especially with I mean, Quelling Blade being able to cut down trees. And Visa going down. I mean, his net worth is already relatively low yeah. at this point in time. It's going to be even further. And we talked about him not getting the best amount of farm in the early game. He's not transitioning very well. Obviously, not necessarily his fault. Yeah. Um, but this is the part, you know, it was a little bit disconcerting for for Wings in the early stage of this game, but now it's kind of shaping up to be exactly what we expected yeah. it to. Yep, so an interesting laning phase now. They're just going to be looking for pickoffs. They have X marks, they have Blink Lasso. He's even got a mech almost down on this Kunkka too, so yeah. they have just about all the items they uh -oh. need to start fighting. Faith Beyond is in the tree line here. No Blink Tag or Firefly first. Eh, he's just scouting things out. Right, look at 747, he sees him now. There's the drum pop, the last of the low, the leap just narrowly. They will catch him the torrents there and plenty of damage again. Wow. Nicely done. That was insane. The leap getting caught right by the lasso. Now another tier one. Is that another double damage? Oh, uh, yeah. Yep, it is. He has gone three, though. Yeah, he's just pretty thick and big. It's too easy now. Feeling pretty good. They also have the Necro book flying out as we speak yeah. on top of that. I think the whole no ads on the run. I know it's 15 minutes, so uh, that's still pretty early, but now they don't have a. They don't have, like, any anti push because you have a support Sand King, so he doesn't have the level to, like, Caustic Finale stun in and do that now. There's gonna get pushed down. Yeah, really I mean, hard. this is exactly what Flight like, Easy sells at. I mean, there's an AD problem here, but they can try to foot push as best as they can. Uh, you can see O4 is currently doing that top lane. I think Wings are going to just play this smart. They're gonna push out all the ways they can, take the towers as quickly as they can. They still have ages for another two uh -oh. minutes on top of that. Oh, uh, get out of here. F04 is gonna throw a strike away. I, I don't know if he was spotted. He's fine in general, so. If he knew someone was coming up top, and well, zero four is getting close to this way. Surprisingly, he is only about three gold away. Middle though, seven for seven again. Imploded. No ship. Yeah, that should be more than enough to get the kill. Uh, he's died too many times in a row. I feel like he's died four or five times just to that combo. Maybe, maybe only three, but it still feels like it's been a lot. And he, you could just see the net worth chart just go more and more in favor of Wings. The top three are currently going to be that Razor, that Bat Rider, as well as that Lycan. Yeah. I, I mean, to be expected. Yeah. And 
Uh, 747 was sitting at second place for a while. Now those, yeah, those two deaths just, they, they needed him to get that early. Yeah. Tax, and now it's going to be super late. Now they're just going to have to hope for the Sand King Blink and taking up uh, some big kills. I mean, is that the only thing they have to hope for? Because it feels like Visa doesn't have much farm. MG's, yeah. MGW's not doing that much. Because he's pretty much, I mean, the Sand King and the 747 are pretty much the only two who can clear out waves. And that's what they need. I mean, they can kind of delay with MJW in the trees, but that's it. Yeah, it's going to be a game of potential rap from FDL. Good team fight that they desperately need. But again, they're very far behind this like, and it's starting to get huge. 10 k net worth almost. He's got his Necro 2 now done. He's on his way to his Necro 3, which is very soon. Uh, it, it just feels like they it's starting to get a little out of control here for FDL right now, Grant. Yes, it is. And we see Moran trying to farm top, and they got to watch out. This uh, Moran just always has to be uh, scared of ganks. And, but they're just pushing bottom, so maybe Moran can get a little bit of farm up here. They're gonna lose a tier two. I don't think you defend this. No, there's no way you do. No, I don't, I don't think so. Push two. Push two. Back up. Yeah, that's I'm not fighting that. I mean, they, what they've done the entire game is like TP04 in front, TP Pro tricks. But he's tied like every time he's done yeah, that. Yeah, I'm really surprised he actually is just close to the yeah. A rough game for the Sanky. Pretty much a rough game from the entirety of FDL at this yep. point. They, they will do their best to push out waves. You talked about the Agonim Center from Marana. She's still one component away. 747, those three deaths really hurting. And, uh, I mean, again, Wings just need to keep Dyer's these waves pushed out, play intelligently, and they should be able to take objectives without any real issues here. Yeah, exactly. Let me see. Life's still going for the Echo Saber now. Just, they need to be able to burst somebody down. But now with Wings having boat and rock, how can you fight them 5v5? They have uh, the rum, they have the, the best AoE in the game. I feel like you have to blow up one of these supports very quickly before they get their abilities off. But if you don't, if you kill one, you don't kill the other, then it's like Ghost Ship comes out or Chaotic yeah. Offering comes out. Uh oh. 747 getting chased down. He'll TP out, he will be successful. He also gets the tower destroyed. No denies, Wings were TPing in and got there in time, but they did not deny it. Yeah, now he has his eggs in about two neutral camps or middle. Oh, just don't die. Tower, Please don't die, 747. You really need it. Oh, they're, yeah, they're going to go for a gank, actually. They're going, they're playing aggressive and looks like bad and like, and maybe they know something's up. They're just, oh, we're going to the jungle yeah, with our team. There. But bottom lane, harassed him by trees. Yeah, the trees will fall before Ooh. they get the tower. It's very close. 34 HP. He could just go get one. Just right click it. Oh, four. I think they're going to go for it. Dagger. Yeah. He's just going to hit it once. That's dead. Yep, he's, he's gonna 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 down and get it. Yep, there we go. All right, they get the life dealer. Control things. 747's like, I wanted that, but except he was in the, the, the jungle. So. Skyroth was up there, too. They were all just like, we need that tower, and that is an Aghanim now for the Marana. That's right, huge. did it. I, I don't know if it's going to be enough. Obviously, you see an Aghanim set through turn turn fights around, and it's also very good for pushing, too, which, yep. again, they have a very good pushing line of as it stands to, to reason. And look at, we see MJW doing the fear on thing, uh, splitting up top. Just cutting the creep wave, yeah. that's that's what you have to do. It's like a tinker, where he's sitting now. Yeah. And he almost has a maelstrom, so he's just gonna, that's what he's gonna do. TP around, just be as annoying as possible. Yeah. That's it. I'll pick up the pipe. Uh, Shadow grabbing that. The net resistance build for a lot of heroes, especially core heroes. We saw Envy build, like, pipe like three games in a row. So he loves pipe Terrorblade, pipe Razor, pipe every whoever you are. Yeah. Lasso, they've found a target, and this time it is going to be the life killer. Big one. Chaotic offering going. They don't want his race to go. They're waiting for the rest of his team to get here. Beast is still rather tanky. He's wanting to kill the goal. X marks back to go ship. He actually misses. Beast is going to turn his attention to Innocent. He'll invest into a creep. They will try to take it down. It's one of them that's still alive. Meanwhile, top tier three is getting pushed in pretty heavily. They aren't going to find this group. Not yet, anyway. Still, though, they're making so much space. This rack, this melee rack is about to go down. Good furrow strike, but it's not enough. Back to Visa, chewing down Ice Ice, actually by fall here, pops the jump guard, pops the back. They will get Blink out of there as he's still pushing top. They're going to try to fight this another X marks going in. Beast is caught out. He will fall. Try to toggle. Can't get it off in time. It just goes as well to make sure that Moonlight Shadow won't get him away. 747 also perhaps in trouble here. No dust connecting on him. Starstorm barely doing any damage. They use brain drops just an edge will tank get up Shadow with that pipe up. They'll make some trance. Meanwhile, jumping in again. Face beyond this time. Find 747. The torrent. The leap away in time. Is it enough? He's so low. One more right click might bring him down. He's sitting at 6 HP. Barely survives, but his rack will not be so lucky. His wings will take down the first set of the game at 20 minutes in. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised how long Diesel lasted there. He got ganked middle, and then they were just kind of maybe toying with him so he couldn't go back you and defend. You can't go back to your yep. base. It's fine. We'll just take your rack. They were letting him, and then they almost get a pick off again, but wings escapes.
no harm done, and they take a whole set of racks. There's just a severe lack of damage, especially with Beast going down. Even if he was yeah. alive, he might get kited against the Shapeshift, all that stuff that Whis has ready to go. They did use the Golem there, so that is on cooldown Shapeshift, obviously. The rest of the ultimates from Wing, very low cooldown. Oh, there Ooh, was. good pick, though. MJW as well as Bisa finally find a kill. It is only against the Warlock, and it's it's not that special, but at least it's something. Yeah, but I see what they're doing now. They're gonna try to abuse their ward. They saw him, and now you can life steal or bomb inside of MJW. Just TP on and try to find somebody. A Warlock on a few, they can probably kill solo. Here they go middle. That's smart. There's another gross ship coming out. MJW actually is able to get out in time. He's very speedy with the boots. They've already lost the scars. Meanwhile, a lot of damage going in. The Kunkka will fall. The Burrow Strike. Can they get blank? They have no other way to catch him. It looks like as he will be able to get out in time, that shapeshift is just too difficult to deal with for FDL right now. Still, one for one trade. I mean, they're worth more, so you'll, you'll take that for sure. If they would have brought down the Lycan, that would have been huge. a lot of gold for one kill. It is. And, oh man, Hurricane Pikes. Those Razor just gets tankier, doing a little more damage, and has a pipe. They're just going to run at you. I think when Chaotic Offerings up, they're just going to run straight when down the middle. Full five on five, I don't really see yeah. any way FDL can find those pickoffs that they've found previously. Yeah, they're going to have to do a Sand King to X-Bomb and just really hope they find either the Warlock or the Kanka. The smokes have been working out somewhat well for FDL, though. We'll yeah. see if they have another one ready to go here momentarily. Yeah, we saw the burst yeah. damage when Mirana went in on that uh, Kanka. He, he dropped pretty quick. The yeah. Biza even with doing the, And that was with the rum on top, too. He yeah. used Ghost Ship exactly. previously. So, not bad. And he does have... Oh, he is not. Yo, yeah, it's okay. Almost a death so up on Life Stealer. But they're just gonna smoke gang. They're going for something. Yeah, they oh. will find Faith Beyond perhaps. Meanwhile, they'll back up. Moonlight Shadow did go. It looks like Wings uh, have a pretty good understanding that something here is happening. Yeah. And Yeah, nothing nothing big, just a smoking. Pretty much cancel as well as the uh Murano. I don't know what happened, but they just needed two people. I liked it. Alright. MJW, Cliff Jungling. Oh, God. I think you report him. I don't think you mute him. Yep. No, I'm just kidding. MJW doing what he can to get farm. It's uh, pretty good. I mean, you have a Maelstrom. This is not like level one Cliff Jungling. Uh, for now, FDL, though, they'll split up across the map. They'll try to push the waves out again. Wings are very centered around that Roche Pit, which is up and rail readily available. They have Roche on at their fingertips if they want it. They were waiting possibly for Blink's BKB. Now with that again, I... <laughs> Starstorm is going to be negated if he has the BKB ready to go, so he's... As long as he pops that BKB in a fight, I don't see Wings losing it, really. And Life Storm are getting close to that Desolator, but they're going to be going up against the Aegis of the Immortal. This is just... I, the, there's one Rax gone on top lane, so FDL are already getting a push less in. income. They are already getting pushed Dyer's in as well, like you said. Top. And it just it's going to be furthered by, you know, them taking this Aegis and starting to run down mid or bottom lane or wherever they want to go. FDL are doing the best that they possibly can. I will say 747 has caught up pretty well. We already talked about the Aghanim Scepter or whatever his next item is going to be. We'll, we'll wait and see. He has a Blank Dagger now too, which he just picked up. So he, he's got some good net worth, but is it enough to take down these tankier heroes on wings? It's pretty rough. He wants to get into the back line and just clear out the support, but who knows if he can even do enough damage to do that. If they just get Pirate Rum off or Rock off, like your whole decision to go for the supports is pretty much just not not a good decision. I mean, at that yeah, point, at that point if, if it's still five versus five, I feel like that's the yeah. end of the fight. If it's still... I'd say you have, you have to pick one of them before the ult comes out and then hope the rest of your team kites Razor, because he's just going to be zipping around with a pipe on him. Yep. Very tough. MJW split pushing. There's the play we talked about. There's the middle. They're just going five down middle. Looks yeah. like uh, no not... reason to be crazy. No, I mean, Wings are going to... They did spoke up. They're going to try to find this fight. Faith Beyond has his blink four staff, as well as Lasso ready to go. FDL has also spoke up. Uh-oh, Burrow Strike. They find a couple here. The Lasso will go. Meanwhile, Beast is going in, looking for that kill on the Warlock. He's out. Good four staff. They will not be able to find it. He's got Rock ready to go. And Beast is getting static. Like, they will be able to get him down with a double kill. Blink has popped the shape ship, and they are just running over FDL. 747 oh. gets dropped as the Stars from, I believe, brought down the Necro Warrior, yep. the Backlash came through and pretty much killed him at that point, which is unfortunate. He'll have to buy back, but it's too little too late. There's the Hurricane Pike. Shadow's going to whip him literally a couple meters away, and uh, Wings will just start their attempt on the Tier 3 Tower. With only two heroes alive for FDL, this might very well be second set of racks, and perhaps the game. That's rough. They, have the, they tried the Moonlight Shadows, but they have a gem on the bat. They have... Book three, obviously, up on the light hand. They, it just doesn't do anything. They just get kited around, and even with the decent initiation, more staff, more staff. The ultimate counter to uh, Nex. Yeah, they kited the hell out of FDL. Nobody able to chase down that warlock, who is still rather squishy. Second set of racks down. FDL are gonna give this to the very end. 
Seven seconds left on the life killer. MJW is trying to at least push this wave out, but there are other waves coming in both mid and top momentarily. They're still going to work in the tier three tower. He just does so much damage now. Without shape shift, without an AC. Blink last of the fine 7417 just fought back, and it looks like he will fall. Scarab Vigil, he doesn't do nearly enough damage. The Ghost is up, they have the run ready to go. MJW is trying to bring down Ice Ice. Meanwhile, Shadow statically beats up. Ice Ice does get the kill on MJW. The Link is up, Stan can't get it. He's destroyed his like, oh, BG just killed me. And GG is in fact called. Game number one. Well, it's, uh, it started out pretty interestingly for FDL and Wings, but uh, Wings crush it after about 20 minutes of yep. I like, I do like what FDL did in the beginning of the game. They rotated uh, the Nature's Prophet around, got a few games, but in the end, the uh, good rotation by Lycan to the jungle just farming up. They just got way too much farm out of the lanes, even when they weren't in them. Yeah. That's the problem. It was really just, for maybe a minute or two there, there was a... Uh,